We carry on with our explanation for chapter two, rolling stock systems. And we have talked about uh, uh, several sections. Recently, we talked about maintenance. And today, we'll be talking about freight railways. One of the main usages of railways is for passengers, and the other one is for freight. And uh, using railways for freight is one of the greatest applications for railways. So without further ado, let's start looking at the content of this section. So this will be the content of the section. We'll be talking about we'll be talking about history and competition from road and air for freight services. We'll be talking about bogies and suspension design, specifically for freight, some of the bogies that are being used. We'll be talking about braking equipments. Also, we'll be talking about the loading gauge, this cross section that should, all the trains should adhere to. Also, we'll be talking about the future of freight, we, we, where we would like to take our freight service, our rail freight service uh, to in the future. So it should be noted that Railways, our freight rail service, uh, rail freight service is facing a strong competition from road freight services using trucks and air freight services. There are different aspects of this competition. It can come to cost, it can come to speed, and it can, can come to ease of use or uh, customer interaction. There was a great development in terms of air freight and road freight in the recent uh, decades. So for example, you have these companies that they have their dedicated transport fleets and they have technology services like web-based systems and you can track your shipment wherever you are. Also, we see there is an increase in the axle load that is being used in road. It can reach up to 44 tons and the usage of air suspension system or a proper suspension system in the vehicles made a big difference in the usage of road vehicles. So that is being said, but also the railway has still has a strong advantage. The railway has that advantage that it can uh, carry enormous load or enormous or a great amount of uh, freight or uh, shipments or raw materials or containers for long distance does not have to stop for any congestion or does not have to go through the challenges that road users may have. It has its own dedicated route and it's very efficient. The wheel rail interface is one of the most efficient interfaces in the world and it can uh, decrease the energy usage. Also, it, it is designed to avoid congestion because it's, it has its own dedicated route. So the history of freight uh, of uh, of rail freight service can start from four wheel mine trucks or carts. This kind of truck where you you take uh, you go to the mine and you you take your uh, uh, rail in, inside the mine and you put whatever uh, excavation you have made inside this cart and you take it out. But now there are many innovation that happened since that simple usage. Of course. There are primary and secondary suspension. There is continuous air brake and there is automatic couplers and more. So uh, rail freight has developed a lot in terms of technology, but it is still, is still facing a strong competition from road and air. And the main design choices, any, um, any designer for a freight vehicle should be thinking about, he will be thinking about two axle design he will be thinking about bogey design and he will be thinking about articulated track. Should we build this vehicle for uh, uh, one container or for double container? Uh, th th this is just an example of some of the challenges that might face uh, some of the designers of freight vehicles. So now we'll be talking about bogey and suspension and we'll just mention some of the few examples. So the, the primary uh, reason or the primary purpose of uh, suspension system and including the bogey is to cope with poor track geometry and also to be cheap, durable and have low maintenance. It also uh, should be make sure that the good is not damaged while it's being transported. That the shipment, the freight uh, load that you have should not be damaged while it's being transported. 
So we'll be talking about two types of bogies. This is the Y2, this is the Y25 uh, uh, bogie. It's very common in Europe and it used coil springs, axle box and uh, friction damping. And this is the three beast bogey, and it's common in the States. It's, it's consists of three pieces, and it uses coil springs and friction dampers. This is just an example of some of the bogies that are common and are being used in freight vehicles. Now we'll be talking about our braking equipment. So the freight braking equipment it can use pneumatic or electro pneumatic equipment. And basically the air is stored in this reservoir. And if the driver release the brake valve, then the air will be transported through the, pipe, uh, through the pipes until it, it reach the brake cylinder through the brake block. And it, it, it starts braking. So it should be noted that releasing and the application of pneumatic braking can take a long time for application and for release. This is the loading gauge that I have been talking about earlier. And we talked that trains should have a cross section that is suitable for different bridges and panels across the network. So for example, this is the loading gauge in Britain. You can see the other one in Europe, this one, and you can see this one in Belgium or Central Europe, and this is in USSR or old Soviet Union. And it can be similar to what is available in the States. So loading gauges from one country to another can vary. Some countries have bigger loading gauges, but in an ideal scenario, you should have your bridges and tunnels adhering to that loading gauge across the whole network. And that's an ideal scenario. Uh, now, where do you want to take freight, uh, freight, rail freight service? So there is many challenges that frail, uh, freight rail is facing. But we would like to take this uh, technology to be able to carry more, to damage the track less, to have lower whole life cycle cost. So for example, this is uh, one of the high speed freight services that is developed in France. This is an American container, uh, uh, double container freight service. And you can see this is a Chinese freight train or uh, this is a Chinese freight train. So we would like to also, in addition to carry more and damage the track list and have lower whole life cycle costs, we, should, we would like to have a greater flexibility that you can add or remove uh, 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 carriages uh, in an, uh, as much as you want. And you can also increase the route capacity. Maybe you can carry more or uh, run more trains on the same line. And also maybe you can make some of the trains go faster without damaging the goods with reliable and safe service. So that was a brief introduction on some of the aspects that we would be thinking about when we are uh, uh, running or designing a rail freight service. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. We'll be talking about, about other topics in the coming section and have a great evening.